Well, thank you very much to Phil. You have yourself a beautiful day as well. I must indicate that the sun, you know, is starting to come out. It's getting a little bit warmer, but we're not yet there. Nonetheless, we're still coming to you live from Platform 10 here in the Northern Cape. Now, I've indicated at the beginning of the show that alcohol abuse is a huge problem here at Solplaki municipality, not necessarily in Kimberley, but as well as in Platform Day. Now, after spending seven years in prison for the murder of his friend, a reformed convict, Fernando Fisahi, is now spreading the message that crime does not pay. Fisahi was sentenced to 13 years in jail after he murdered his friend during a dispute in 2006 in Kimberley. Now, he's now dedicating his time to giving out motivational sessions to the young people, particularly in schools, just to tell them to stay away from crime. He joins us now here in Plotfontein. Welcome and morning live. Good morning to the viewers. A pleasure being here in Plotfontein. It's a pleasure to have you on our show this morning. Fernando, tell us your story. How did it all happen? I think uh, for me to begin with is just to say that it was a sad experience for both uh, families that actually lost uh, young people in this uh, actual incident. Uh, back in 2005, while I was still in school, uh, I actually got involved with some wrong uh, friends and yeah, with the substance abuse and uh, alcohol actually playing a huge role in my poor decision making. Eventually it led to me uh, taking the life of a person that I used to be friends with. But what actually happened was that you mentioning the use of alcohol in this whole dispute, but apparently there was also gangsterism involved. Yeah, I think uh, not necessarily the, the, the gangsterism, but with gang-related activities that led up to, to the, the actual incident uh, made me to actually uh, do what I had to do because it was a matter of, of my life also being in danger and uh, I just took a very, very naive and a stupid, a stupid decision that uh, ended me up in jail for almost uh, seven years in prison. And it's something that devastated my family and also the family of the victim because we was we used to be so close. And for me, it's a sad thing that I still have to regret that things uh, uh, every day of my life now and showing remorse to to the victim of uh, the fa the family of the victim and so on. So now, Fernando, you're talking about making the wrong decisions. And here in Sol Plaki municipality, young people are making wrong decisions. Consumption of alcohol is at highest level ever. Talk to us about that, the prevalence of alcohol here. Yes, ma'am, I must agree with you in saying that uh, substance abuse, more especially alcohol, not only in the Platfontein area, but in the Kimberley and surrounding areas, is quite of a big problem because we don't have much uh, positive role models to look up to. And when you would find yourself uh, in the streets of, of Kimberley, you would see a lot of young people is indulging in alcohol, which is becoming extremely uh, unacceptable now to, to see that young people is throwing away their lives or actually messing up their futures with uh, consuming substances. And I'm trying my level best, I'm not perfect, I'm trying my level best to try and assist in that regard by just assisting with some mentoring and uh, supporting guys that actually wants you to get out of this because it's quite a challenge for young people to make their decisions on their own. I believe it's, it's quite challenging, especially for the fact that they've got nothing to do. They just sit at home and idling. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily also say they have nothing to do. Uh, a lot of young people must be in school. So that's where they're supposed to be. That's an extracurricular activities is becoming something that they are not usually accustomed to. So we are trying to reinvent that and we are trying to come up with strategies that uh, make them want to take interest in sport, in other activities like camping, more especially us engaging with them at the youth camps that the government is actually uh, facilitating during the Trailblazer uh, youth camp period where we go on camp with young people just to uh, teach them about leadership and nation building, social cohesion, how, how well can they actually start small projects that influence people uh, hugely in the community. Okay, and you're also telling me that tomorrow you have a special project whereby the Deputy Minister of Correctional Services will also be in this area. You're taking part in that program as well. Yeah, it's an extreme honor to actually be part of it because uh, Deputy Minister Tabang Mahwetla will be actually uh, come, uh, coming to Kimberley to address us with regard to the 
ex-offenders desk that they would like to establish because ex-offenders need to play their role in combating crime. So I will be doing a presentation uh, to the minister on the on one of the resolutions that has been adopted at the national ex-offenders conference last year. So. That's, that is also something that I'm extremely uh, proud of doing in assisting uh, in uh, contributing towards the fight of crime in respective communities. Leister Fernando, baie, baie, dank vir jou tiet en al die beste. Dit is a, a plezier, ma'am. Uh, ek, ek sien uh, uit na baie positieve dinge uh, hier in die platfontein gemeenskap as ook in my gemeenskap en is vir ons allemaal om ons a rol te speel so dat ons kan. Nee, ons soop vir al die beste, baie, baie, dank jy. There you have it, uh, Fernando Visaghi, an ex-convict or rather a reformed convict, you know, talking to us about the programs that he's involved in in the area to make sure that he young people stay away from crime. Well, Morning Life takes a break. There is still a little bit more to come from Plotfontein. Don't go away.